Ooh, what a wonderful time to be alive. I keep seeing um, a lot of great stuff on my Facebook. <clears throat> it's about uh, the revival and what's happening. And um, I'm seeing people that have a, you know, they have a, a little bit of a relationship with Jesus. And um, I'm seeing that, like, grow exponentially in this season. Um, so I was just thinking about the times that I've, I've talked to people and the seeds that have been planted. And I'm like, maybe I should go follow up with that person. So, like, if you've ever planted a seed and you've wondered about what's going on with that seed, now's the time to follow up with that person because revival's here. God is just, like, whatever is there, like, whatever, whatever, your feet back in. So like whatever's whatever's in there that has been planted, um, God's presence is like is exponentially moving um, and more power. So they're starting to realize that I have that that feeling inside me. And what is that feeling? Um, and what's really great is when you have an opportunity to unconditionally love somebody um, for no other reason than just loving them, no agenda, just Jesus, just loving them. And you're nice to this person, and you're, you're ministering to them, and they're just, they're just not getting it, right? And they're just like, no thanks, or, oh, that's nice, that's for you, but it's not necessarily for me. Um, and then you think that you've missed it, right? You're like, oh, well, or not necessarily missed it. You, you've done what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to love this person unconditionally, and this person um, didn't necessarily accept it, right? And I think this is really important for this season because these these, these when, you, when you love somebody like that, you're planting a seed. That's what we are. We're not soul winners. We're seed planters. So if we're unconditionally loving people, we're planting those seeds, whether we remember or not. And um, you're not the only person to plant seeds in that person's life. Like you are, it's not a mystery that you saw what you saw in that person's life, and then you decided, "Hey, I'm gonna love them. Hey, I'm gonna pour into them." God was like, "Here, I highlight this one because they are sensitive to my presence, because they need me." And really, that's everybody. So he highlights them. Different people to different people because it's an oikos, your sphere of influence. Um, so what I'm starting to see is when these people that I've, you know, I've, that people have been loving, that I've been loving, and now it's like a season of revival where God's just whatever is flaming in their heart, God is stoking it right now, whether they uh, necessarily want it or know it or not. He's like, I'm here. You have fire. I'm stoking it. Um, and then they, it's really cool because when they finally realize, you know, like when, when I knew Jesus was real, like the only thing that came out of my mouth, my mouth was, you're so real. Like your love is so real. And what's really funny is God has conditioned us and he has set us up to feel that love. So the first time we feel that love, it's not a, it's not a crazy, what, what the heck is this thing? Because God has sent people in your life to love you and to plant seeds. So when I just, I just, God was just giving me a revelation this week that when people experience my love for real, he was like, thank you for planting that seed. Thank you for paving that way. Thank you for loving these people, even though you didn't see the increase. So I just want to encourage you guys, if, if you've been loving people and you feel like, and I know there's a lot of people in here that's like, you love people, you love people, and you love people, and it just seems like you're kind of standing in the same spot. Um, and then you can't see that increase, but that increase is, is going to be flamed right now. So, like, if you have somebody that you're like, well, I wonder, you know, five years ago I used to meet up with this young man for coffee or something like that. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should circle back and see what's going on. So I just encourage you guys, um, do that. Think about those people. Who have you been pouring into? Because right now is a season where it's going, I don't know how to explain it, but it's going to be easier because it's going to be, um, I don't know, for me it feels like it was kind of an effort, but now it's kind of we're stepping into a season to where we don't have to think about it anymore because this is what God's preparing us for and this is what we do. During the during the worship, they um, come awaken your people, come awaken your city. God of revival. Like, that's like the heart cry right there. Like, that's like, as an evangelist, I'm like, that's like my prayer, like, and, and like frustration, not not frustration, but passion. God, awaken your people. Like, these people are sleeping. Please awaken them. Every, somebody's going to hell every day. There's people going to hell every day. Awaken your people. And then once you awaken your people, you will awaken your city because 
Oh, it's so good. I like, I just don't even, I was like, can we just do like five more worship songs and then I'll just pray and then we can <laughs> go do something else. So during, um, during worship, I had this um, really cool vision and it was, um, I saw, it was like a movie theater sign and then it had like the flashing lights and then there were there were people and they were like lines out both sides and they're around the corner and then you go over here and peek and it's around that corner and it's around that corner and um i look up at the movie sign and it's the sign reads church on the rock and then um it had those two asterisks and then it said revival is here um it was cool yeah so it was like the uh god was telling me when i was standing here he said the stage has been set um He's like, I, I gave you the venue. I gave you the um, the material. Um, now I need you guys to make sure this line flows and these people can get in and they have a place. And then um, I had this phrase, the stage has been set and we slay the dragon. Yeah. So the victory is already here, guys. The stage has been set. He's already shown us. You know what I mean? He's like, this is what we're going to do. This is, this is what we're getting ready for. He's setting the stage right now. He's getting us ready. He's preparing our hearts for what's to come because it's going to be out the door and it's going to be around the corner and it's not going to be about the numbers or the people. It's going to be about the presence and the power of God and how he moves and how we can how we can listen to him and how he moves and when he moves and where he moves and how he wants to move and all this stuff. People are going to be like, wow, that sounds really overwhelming and confusing and how am I going to? But he's given all of us. We're a body, you know? And that's what I'm going to get into today. I'm going to go through... Um, this one's going to be more, I know uh, a lot of my stuff is more like experiential and how I experience it, but I think I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to dig into Romans chapter 12, some absolute gold, 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 gold. And I was reading the uh, the preface, the preface, whatever you want to call it in my Bible, and it had a fun fact, and it said, uh, Paul wrote this book. And he hadn't even yet been to Rome. So I thought that was pretty funny how uh, the book of Romans that Paul wrote, he had, hadn't even stepped foot in Rome yet. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. And then I'm going to break it down um, verse by verse. On, is it the spot? Verse by verse on how I understand it. So um, we'll start at the very top. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done, because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Oh, don't look at him. <laughs> Oh, tighten it down. All right. So I'm going to go on with verse 12, too. It says, um, and I love this verse so much. Um, Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. I love that. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. And um, in different version, it says, do not be conformed to this world. So whatever the, you know, and even nowadays when you have all the um, just absolutely confusing stuff, like um, 19 different genders or whatever, like don't, don't, don't let this confuse you. You know what I mean? And don't conform to it. You know what I mean? Um, like homosexuality is okay. Like, why, what are we going to conform to? Are we going to conform our lives around this ideal that this is okay? That's not what it says in my Bible, and that's not what he says. So we got to be, we got to be really careful on like how we, conf- like what what we let be our life. Do not copy the behaviors and customs. Does that count out Christmas and Christmas trees and stuff? Or I'm just. <laughs> okay. Um, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So I love the way the Bible works. He says, he says, do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Okay. I'm on board with that. But how? And then he just gives it right away. But 
the L E T let God. And that's what I think we have a big problem with is letting God transform us. God says, I don't want you to be like this. Okay, God, I agree with you. How can I get there? And he says, let me transform you. It's just like, oh, okay. Let me transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Okay, I'm not supposed to be conformed to this world. And God, I have to let you change the way I think. Like that, like to me, those just like little things, like I get to let God transform the way I think. So God, they, in the Bible, you says you say that this isn't right and this isn't right. God, speak to me about this. I don't, I don't view that as a problem, God, but I know you do. Speak to me. Let me understand. Change my way of thinking because I want to be in line with what you're doing and what you're saying. You know what I mean? This is all right there. And then, um, so if, in, in my opinion, if we are like, okay, God says do not copy the customs or the behaviors and to let him transform my mind into the way to think, but then what? Like, why am I going to do this? Like, what's in it for me type of deal, you know? And then at the very end, he says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. What I really like about this is um, that word learn in there. Um, it's not just like it's a, a wham, bam, like right away thing. It says, then you will learn to know God's will for your life. And there's a lot of people out there that are like, God, what's, what's your will for my life? I need to know. Um, it sounds like it's a learning thing, right? It's not just like, so if you're frustrated on, on where you're going or what you're doing or what God's will is for your life, it's a learning process, you know? It's, you, you get to learn with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the lover of your soul. Nobody more gentle and kind and loving. You get to learn from him. And what is God's will for your life? I can answer that. I don't know fully, but I know that he says that, one, it's good. I like good. He says, two, it's pleasing. I like good and pleasing. But then he puts the icing on the cake. Perfect. <laughs> okay, I see you. So your will for my life is not only good, not only pleasing, but it's perfect. Just as you are perfect. Like, come on. How can you not want to jump on board with that? How can you not want to not want to read this and say, okay, God, boom, burn it, fire, stamp me. Where in my life am I conforming? What am I believing? What behaviors am I doing? God, help me renew my mind, change my way of thinking. You know, it's kind of like going on a diet. Um, you don't just, like, change what you eat. Um, going on a diet is a lifestyle choice. You have to change um, what you, your morning routines, your afternoon routines, your nighttime routines. You can't just say, I'm only going to eat this. No, there's people you hang out with. Hey, bud, you want to go out to lunch? Or, you know, oh, no, I'm trying to keep it keep it there. Or like, you know, normally you would wake up and get on your phone, but you're on a diet now. So now you're going to change your lifestyle and your lifestyle requires you to wake up and work out, not spend that time on there. So renewing your mind, there's a lifestyle that has to happen. You don't just get to say, okay, today I'm not going to do this. No, you got to do something about it because God's not looking for spectators. Like I said last week, he's looking for doers of his word. You can't just read it and say, I like that. I'm going to take that for myself. No, you got to own it. God, this is mine. All right. So because the privilege, uh, verse 3, it says, Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. So when somebody gives me a warning, I'm like, okay, I'm listening. All right. This is so good, guys. Don't think you are better than you really are. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it says, and I, I just imagine him saying this, you know. Don't think you are, I'll just read it first and then I'll say how I imagine it. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourself by the faith God has given you. Ooh, okay. It's, he, it's like somebody saying, hey, hey, J Jesse, don't, like you're great. You really are. But don't think of yourself better than you really are. Okay. Oh, how, how great am I, though? You know, like, where, where, where are you viewing me at, God? Like, how can I take a step back and honestly look at myself in the mirror and say, God, what do you see? 
where where do you love me? Where are my flaws? Where am I conforming? You know? And then um what kind of, I love this. And he says, just come on, man. He's like, come on, be honest. Be honest. He's like, because God's like, it's just me and it's just you. Like, who are you lying to? Just be honest. Like, or do you do this too much? Yeah, you do. How can we work on that? You know, because that's those times when if you're going to reevaluate yourself with God, like what business do you have not being honest? You know, God's saying, hey, give up this part of your life. And it's like, well, let's can we work on other things. Because if I do this, then it's no fun. Man, there's so many times in my life where God's like, give that up. And I'm like, but what about the fun? That stuff was never fun. You know what I mean? Like, what if people, what do people think about me? Who cares? It's an honest evaluation of yourself, you know, because it's, it's you and it's him. And when you're looking in that mirror and he's standing right behind you, like, that's my boy. You see this? This is what I like about that. Look at your smile. Look at the way you talk. I love that. And then it says um, something that kind of confused me that I had to kind of search out a little bit. Um, don't think, be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. Um, so I wrote down in the, my notes, the kind of faith they're talking about isn't the saving faith, but the faith to receive and to exercise the gifts God gives you. So it's um, when it's like, okay, so God, you made me uh, an evangelist. Um, you made me to, to prophesy. Um, what am I doing? How am I using those? God, you, you gave me a gift of serving. God, that's what he wants you to reevaluate right there. He's like, what did I give you and how are you using it? Because I've made you Jesse and Jesse encompasses these things. This is who you are. These are the gifts I've given you without repentance. How are you using them? How are you stewarding them? What's going on? You know, have we had these conversations lately with God? Because they're so freeing and they're so good. The rod and the staff, I'm telling you, this is a good season to go through. All right. So this next part is like kind of a no-brainer, but I love the um, the visual analogy uh, God gives because I'm kind of like a visual person. I like I, I give like some examples that help me understand stuff. Um, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. So right here, I'm looking at my body, right? And we cannot function without each other. And we all have our special place and the special function that we have, whether it's an appendix or whatever, you know, nobody knows what it does, but it's there. And if it explodes, you'll die. So I don't know what the, what's that look like spiritually. In that? Do we have an appendix in here somewhere? You know, like if, if you blow up, it's really going to hurt stuff, but we don't, you don't really do. <laughs> Say what, Gavin? <laughs> no. Ah. Yeah, that's just a thought that I had, like, okay, if we're all part of a body and it's a function, well, who's, what's the appendix then? All right, and that's just like uh, an analogy, like, I have two hands, and it's really easy to tie my shoes with two hands, but boy, if you take away that one hand, I can still tie my shoe, or I can still learn how to tie my shoe, but man, it's going to be kind of a struggle, because this hand was a part of me. And we love that hand. And this hand did what my other hand wasn't doing. It met it there. My legs, they walk and sink. If I just have one or I have a bad hip, it's gonna, we're not going to be efficient, right? We're all part of one body. If we see somebody in our body hurting, we need to love them. We need to come alongside of them and say, brother, what's up? Sister, how are you? I haven't seen you. I haven't talked to you. That's not normal. Are you okay? Today you look, today you look a little down. Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay, well, maybe I missed it, but if, uh, if you need somebody to talk to, just go ahead and reach out to me. I love you. And that person's going to be like, man, I wasn't honest with them. I'm probably going to have to call them on Saturday because that's a really good invitation, and I'm hurting, and I need that. And that's funny because these people are our body, and we get a chance to help our body function correctly. So if you see somebody in your church body that's hurting, it is your obligation to come and love them and, or at least come, come with somebody that's like, oh, hey, you know, Ashley really relates to that person. I'm going to go to Ashley. And, yeah, I guess you've got to be careful because you don't want to get into gossip or anything like that. But if your heart is true, you'll be able to, to approach and strategize the way you can help your brother or your sister. It's just like if you have no eyes, you can't see, no tongue, you can't speak. I mean, there's just so many things that take the eyes to work. It's not just, I'm an eyeball, but it's like, there's like the eye and the nerves and the blood flow to the brain. Like, it's all very intricate. 
even the way you talk with your throat and your tongue and the air, like those are like several different things that you need. So it's not like, oh, well, he's a pastor. He's an elder. It's like, it's not just, it's not that simple. Like it's more than that. Like everybody here is a functioning part of the body. And nobody is more important than the next person in this room is basically what that's saying because we're all a part of a body and we all have our function. And if we don't have you, and I'm super glad you're here, if we don't have you, it's just not, it doesn't feel the same. It feels like it doesn't function the same. All right, verse six, in his grace, God has given us, and I love this part. This is my, we're going into it. And in, in his grace, God has given us different gifts to do certain things well. And that's what um, Rod was kind of talking about, the pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist. Um, But this goes on to do the, so if God has given you ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. So how many people in this room, um, God has told you to go and um, say something to somebody like, um, I don't know, you can have many examples. Like he tells me to to get out of the gas station and ask that person how their mom's doing. Are you kidding me? Like, why would I get up and go ask a complete stranger this question? Um, but like in, in the prophecy world, when you get a word, you, like, I don't even know how to explain it, but if you've had it, you're like, uh-uh. <laughs> like that sounds... That sounds like I don't want to say that. Like, what if they don't have a mom? What if their mom died? What if their mom's sick? What if they don't like their mom? Like, you're really going to have me go up and talk to somebody about something that's none of my business that might cause a confrontation. But what's really funny is if you're loving that person, God's not going to tell you something. You know, he's going to say, I love that person and they won't listen. So I sent you, you know, and there's so many times where I've not done that. And I've just felt this, like, God's like, it's okay, dude. Hey, it's fine. You didn't do it. I I have somebody else. But sometimes he's like, Jesse, gosh, that's what I made you for. How hard is it? You know what? That's not that hard. Hey, bud, the quick question might be crazy. Um, I was just sitting over here. Uh, My name is Jesse. I love Jesus. But um, I just can't, I just can't go without saying this. Is your relationship with your mom fine? It's that easy. No, man, it's good. I don't know. You sound, all right, well, maybe I missed it, but just blessings, man. You know, Jesus loves you, and if anything is, you know, broken there, he can just give it to him, man, you know, and and then walk away and exit because it's not up to you on how they respond to what you heard from God, okay? And and as long as we do it in love, we're not going to be disappointed because they didn't turn you down. They didn't turn your word down. They turned Jesus, you know? And it's, it's our chance to plant that other seed. And even if we just go over here and we love this person, how do they know about my mom? And then, you know, two days later, somebody else brings up something. You know, that's, that's the way it works. You don't know how many, this is so crazy. You're the third person to ask me about my mom and nobody ever asked me about her. Like, you don't know how many times I'm telling you guys, step out on that. It looks like a ledge. It looks like you're here. And it's like, oh, it's so far. But really, it's <laughs> like right there. And it's like, Ugh. Oh, that wasn't that bad at all. Okay, because God's not going to put you up on a big ledge and do really, really tough things. He's going to put you way down here where he says, my son, you're safe. It looks like 30 feet, but it's three. Trust me, jump, do it. And then when, and then when, he, when he trusts you with, quote, unquote, bigger things, they won't be bigger things because you know him. You know his voice. It'll look like Jesse's standing up on that ledge, and, oh, man, he really took a plunge on that one. No, he didn't. He's still jumping from two, three feet because he trusts the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He'll never put you on that, on that edge to look down and be scared. You'll say, I've done this before. I hear your voice, and I know it's true. And, like, for me, I feel a responsibility to where if I don't go and do it, ah, like I feel like I'm, I'm hurting that person almost, and you really it's it's not like a responsibility thing. But man, if God gives it to you, use it, do it, because like it it'll start out small, and you won't really make man. It it really just started out as an inkling, like a like a does the color gray mean anything to you? Paint my whole house gray, agreeable gray, everything. You don't you don't even know, like you don't even know. So if God will say something small to you, do it. 
It's just a small thing and a small thing, but it means a big thing to somebody else. And he's been trying to speak to that person, but they won't listen. So he has to send somebody else, a complete stranger, or even somebody you, you dang well know. Very good. And they said, hey, God told me to call you and tell you you're right. Go for it. I don't know what it means. And you know what? When God tells you to call somebody and tell them they're right, you go for it. And you don't over-explain it. Well, it could mean this and it could mean that. Nope. Unless God's saying it to you, don't speak it. Hey, I don't know. Just want to be honest. God said you're right. Okay? Oh, do you think it could be about this? Don't know. That's up to you. What I think you should do is you should bring it before God. And um, you should really just talk to him about it. Because really, we're not opening up a conversation for us to. We're opening up that conversation so we can just step back and let them talk because that's more important than anything that we want to say. So if you can prophesy, prophesy. If you get a word, guys, if you even just feel it, do it. I'm telling you, when I started, it was so hard. I felt like God was grabbing me by like my elbow and like leading me, like physically grabbing me because I wouldn't go. But he says, I have plans for your life. He's so good. This is a good one. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. So if your gift is serving, I love what he says there, serve them well. He didn't say, if your gift is serving, serve them. No. If you have a gift of serving, serve them well. That's your job. You know what I mean? That's, that's, what, he's, that's what he's commissioned you to do, serving people. I think this church knows a little something about that. Here's a good one. If you're a teacher, teach well teachers. I have a friend um, named Jeff who's a teacher, and we always um, we always mess around about the, you know, the fingers. Like, this is the apostle. This is the prophet. This is the evangelist. This is the pastor. And this is the teacher right here. And I always make fun of my friend um, because he's the teacher. And I always say, like, pinky's kind of worthless, don't you think? Like, it really doesn't really do too much. It's the smallest finger. It's the weakest finger. And teaching's just kind of boring because it's not like my my hardcore like gift or anything and um he's my buddy jeff and we always we always give him crap about that but then somebody brought up the fact that um if you didn't have your pinky this grip would be like 50 percent less of a grip if it was just like this like even if you if you check it out yourself like that teaching that's a gift right there and people have that and um if you have that teaching gift don't hold it back you know because sometimes teachers get some crap you know and they shouldn't because the wealth of knowledge that they have and the understanding that they have of the Bible just blows me away. When somebody has a teaching gift, I just want to sit there and I just want to listen. It's just hard to believe because I talk as much as I do. So if you're a teacher, don't think that nobody doesn't want to hear it, okay? Oh, that's just for somebody else, you know, whatever. And I was reading and there, here's a little something. No, share it. If you got a, that teaching gift, teach people. Not only teach them, but teach them well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Woo! Doesn't that sound crazy? I love, um, I'm a words of affirmation guy. I don't necessarily need them, but my wife knows that when she tells me, you know, looking good, or like, hey, them dishes you did, right on. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, I don't need that kind of stuff, but man, that makes me feel really, really good. So, and I also... Um, since I like that, I love language. I'm trying, I try to encourage people too, um, because I just don't want it to be a one-sided street. So, um, but when you encourage people, do it sincerely. You know what I mean? Don't just do it because you're like, I'm going to start encouraging people. What am I going to say? Um, like that shirt you're wearing today makes you look really good. Do you believe that? Do you feel that? Come on, put some life behind it. If you're going to encourage somebody, encourage them well. Don't encourage them half-heartedly and fake. Like, oh, I got to, got to encourage three people today. It's like, okay, have that in your mind, but... How are you going to, you know, if you can't do it with love, you can't encourage them well, then don't. Because people don't need them to be flattered. You know what I mean? They don't need some false sense of buildup, you know. Encourage them, (laughs) but be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. A giver is always awesome. I love being the giver, too. Um, Because when you get a chance, if, you know, you, you trust God, you're like, I'm a giver. That's what I'm going to do. God, you've, you've blessed me with this. And it's not even talking about somebody that has multi-millions of dollars. There's people that barely have enough to get by, but they give and they keep giving. Even if it hurts them, they keep on giving because their gift is giving and they give it well. 
and they give generously because they know that I didn't do anything to get any of this on my own strength because I can't. You know what I mean? Just like my house. My house, God gave it to me. My family, God gave it to me. My money, God gave it to me. Any opportunity I have in my life, God gave it to me. So who am I to just super guard it? You know what I mean? There's a there's a stewardship that takes place, but there's also of, yep, I'm content and I'm happy, God. God, I see that you've blessed me. Where can I give this back? <laughs> Ask that question. He might get a radical answer back, or it might sound radical to you, but in realistics, he's like, if they would just give this right behind, like, let's make a deal on behind this curtain. There's like 90 times more than what you gave, but don't give because you want to see what's behind that curtain. Give because you love. I love you. Yes, I'll share. Why? Because I have faith that he's going to fulfill. Well, he already gave this to me anyways. So have it. And then there it is again, refilled, you know? Have faith like that. And, and also, all of this is listening to the Lord. You know, don't give just frivolously or whatever, you know. Be responsible. Say, God, you know, know his voice. Know what he's saying. God, is this what you want me to give? Always consult him. Just like I'd consult my wife before I gave something away. I'm consulting him first. And then I'm going to my wife. That makes it easier if you consult him. Because I heard from the Lord that maybe we should, maybe we should give this over. <laughs> Um, here's a good one. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. If you have been put in a leadership role, if you are not taking it seriously, go away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we don't need leaders that are half hearted and don't want to do anything and barely show up. And you know, they're there. You, know, you can just give all the examples you want, but I just want to encourage you, if you're in leadership, don't grow weary in doing good. You're doing good, and God has made you a leader, and he has placed you there. This is the responsibility that you have because God said, this is my army. This is your portion. This is what you're in control of. Really, he's in control, but this, this is what we get to be in control of. So if you're in leadership, just take it with all the responsibility you can wear it with honor. God has put me in charge of this and I will do this to the best of my capabilities and I will listen to him. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, then do it, do it gladly. I love that last part. So there's some really, really, really kind people and I don't understand their heart like most of the time because there's, they're just, super soft and gentle and kind and and anybody that has that gift of kindness i can tell you when they're successful with it they they definitely do it gladly because nobody's you can't just keep being kind and kind and kind and kind and not see the fruit of that you you're, you're going to want to be you're going to be it's going to be you're going to be so glad to be kind i'm really glad that i'm a kind person rather than i'm really glad i'm a bitter person and put up my walls and make sure nobody can Nobody can get at me. God will put those up. God will protect you. All right. I think I'm doing pretty good. Let's see. All right. So this next part, it says, don't, um, verse 9, don't just pretend to love others. Woo! Going to read it again. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong and hold tightly to what is good. Ooh, I love it. So Jesse was up there, and he was saying that we have to love each other. You know what I mean? We have to, but first and foremost, love is what is, is what is the gas in the machine. Love is the is the engine. If you're in if you're in a role of leadership, like ah, I gotta love these people because I'm up here. You know, no. God, renew my mind, breathe on my heart. You have put me in a position to love people, God. And if you have a hard time with that, go back to verse, what was it, verse 3, you know? Go, go, back to that, go back to that mirror and be honest with yourself. God, I just don't love people the way you want me to love people. Why? Because you told me to love people. You told me to love others, but really love them, God. So if you're, if you're, struggling with that you're like man i'm just an introvert 
and I just don't really like people. People rub me the wrong way. God, breathe in my heart. Just even if it's a baby step, help me, help me give me a strategy. I know it's uncomfortable for me. Give me a strategy to love somebody, but not only love them, but really love them. And it's like, God, I hate what is wrong. That's what he said. He says, hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Ugh. Somebody asked Eric Gilmar, I was like, um, how do you know Jesus is real? And he says, because I cling to him. <laughs> it's like it's like a good uh, picture of here. Hate, hate the evil. Hold tightly to what is good. And what is good is the good news of Jesus Christ is the gospel. And you need to you need to wage war against everything that's not that. And that's why it says, don't be conformed to this world and then hold tightly to what is to what is good. Don't let the world tell you what the gospel is. Let Jesus tell you what the gospel is. Don't let the world tell you what's right and wrong. Let Jesus tell you what's right and wrong and then hate that wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard to serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. So I think this, um, in my in my head, in the season that we're going through, I think nine nine through uh, thirteen is um, is talking about revival and the revival that's coming. So when these people come into our church, God is saying, "Church at the Rock, don't pretend to love these people. When they come in your door, really love them. Church in the Rock, hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Church at the Rock." Love each other with genuine affection. Church on the Rock, take and take delight in honoring each other. Church on the Rock, listen, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. That's what's going to happen. These, when the re- revival is here and it's coming and the people are here, we're going to need to love them genuinely. And we're not going to, guys, don't get lazy. Let's work hard. Not only let's work hard, but let's work enthusiastically. Church of the Rock, rejoice in our confident hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Church of the Rock, here we go. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Guys, if trouble is coming our way, what are we going to (laughs) do? We're going to be patient. You know, we're not going to get worked up. Did you hear? What if we got to do? Patience. Let's pray. Let's pray about it. Let's be patient. Let's not let our emotions get way up there. Let's regroup as a body. Let's pray. Let's plug it right into the source. That's like saying, hey, I got the guy. He's right here on speed dial. Come on, be patient. Here we go. When God's people are in need, love it. This word, right? two words right here. Be ready. <laughs> when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Oh, and then on my Bible right here, I have help me in really thick black words for the uh, always be eager to practice hospitality. Because, <laughs> like, I'm not, I always tell my wife, like, I don't really like it. And I, I know, I think it's in, I think Thessalonians or something. I don't remember where it is, but it's like a good leader will will welcome people into his house. And God, you're work, God's working on my heart because um, I'm like, my space is my space. And, you know, I got like, this is my living room and, and all this kind of stuff. And when people come over, you got to, you know, you guys know how it is, right? When people come over, you got to like hyper clean and act like nobody lives here. Like act like I don't have eight people living in my house. Got to vacuum everything, make sure everything's nice. Like, I'm not all about that. I'd rather just go to their house. <laughs> Or can't we just like meet at the church or something like that? Let's just do something else. But he's telling you, um, and he says it multiple times in the Bible, open up your homes to these people. You know what I mean? And I'm guilty of this too because it's not something that's the forefront. You know, like um, Greg. Greg opens his house like nobody's business. You know what I mean? Like he's, hey, sure, yeah, come on over, man. Let's do it. Yeah, bud, whatever. And me, I'm like, I was like, hmm. maybe I should check with my wife first or 
Maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll call you back. We'll get we'll re, we'll circle back on this. So I'm just letting you guys know transparency. Always be eager to practice hospi- hospitality. I'm working on that personally. <laughs> I expected somebody to be like, "When am I coming over?" All right. Let's see. Yeah, we're doing good. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, bless those who persecute you. That's tough, right? Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Yikes. <laughs> okay. You said it, God. If somebody's persecuting you, uh, you want to do whatever you can to give it back to them. Oh, yeah? You say this about me? Well, Mr. Speck in your eye. <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be really easy to, to go off on something like that, but he says so clearly, do not curse them, but bless them. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Why all the hard stuff? But you're telling me when somebody is saying really hurtful things to me, I can't mm, forget them. You know, like whatever kind of thing you can you can curse them. I'm sure you guys have the imagination. But whatever you can say in your head isn't so hard. You know, it, it seems like it's so hard. But it's like, God, you're not saying that about me. God, do you feel that way about me? No. And then your heart, ooh, your heart just gets tender towards that person because then you realize that your battle isn't against flesh and blood, against that principality that's working behind him. And if you were to curse that person, that's God's son and daughter. Ugh. God, let me never be found in a position like that. When somebody hurts you, you know, and I'm working through this right now, when somebody hurts you, what's your response? Bless them. You can say it. You can say it all you want. Bless him. Do you mean it? Are you really letting God work on your heart there? So if you're just saying it and you feel like it's half-hearted, take God that. Be honest with him. Like it says in the first part, be honest. This whole thing is about honesty with God. God, you said to bless him, but I super don't feel that way. Speak to me some more. Breathe on my heart. Tell me about him. What do you even like about him? challenge that then god will start saying great things about the person persecuting you and then you're gonna get to renew your mind you're gonna get to not conform to this world and say hurt people hurt people so i need to hurt people no hurt people hurt people and that hurt person blesses them that's what that's what set us sets us apart from the rest the wheat from the chaff like come on be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Whew. Be happy with those who are happy. That sounds pretty dang easy, right? Sometimes. What if you're not happy? You know what I mean? Weep with somebody who's weeping. What if you don't feel like weeping? So what I, what I, um, when I ask God these questions, you know, what is it? Be happy with people who are happy. What if I'm not happy? You know, this to me um, is relating to people. You know, you're happy. I see you're happy. I, I want to be happy with you. Why are you happy? You know, because if you know that Brittany's been waiting for this thing and this thing has finally came, I'm not going to know that unless I have a relationship with her. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be happy about the things Brittany's happy about unless I have a relationship with her, you know? I'm not going to be happy with the stuff Bill's happy for. I'm not going to weep for the stuff Rod weeps for unless my heart is connected in there. And if we're all one body, I want to care about what you care about. I want to mourn what you mourn. I want to weep when you weep. And I want to live together. That's how you live together in harmony because we understand each other. I understand why this guy's so happy all the time. Because every morning he wakes up, Jesus is like, it's it. Let's do it again. And he gets a chance to re-sign up. I want to be happy like that. Every day I want to be happy like that. And then when somebody's sad, you get a chance to come alongside them and not just be like, oh, it's okay. But no, oof, I know. I know this was tough for you because we know each other. You know what I mean? Whew, find some people like that in life that you can relate to, that you can be happy when they're happy, sad when they're sad. And that's when you can live in harmony. Don't be too proud. Come on now. Pride comes before the fall. (laughs) 
That's why I said like when you come to the come to the altar or whatever, pride doesn't have a place to stand there. It can't. It gets burned up. Prideful people never come up. They just like to sit in what they have, and they're too prideful to have that conversation with God and say, God, is this true? Is this my time? Are you asking me? Are you speaking with me? Are you talking to me to go? Okay. Because pride can't, pride will get in the way of a lot of things in your life. I can't stand proud. I don't know how to say it, but I can't stand proud people. Like, it's just, they're going to fall. They always do. I don't know what the whole ordinary people thing is. So it's, um, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of Jesse. <laughs> ordinary people. I'm an ordinary person. You know what I mean? And don't think you know it all. Ooh, speak to my heart, Jesus. That's actually, um, I wrote help me on that part too because of like um, when I'm having a conversation with my wife, I definitely know it all. Like there's nobody smarter than me when I have a conversation with my wife and we're having a strategy on how to do something or a direction our family should go or even how we should build a dog kennel or even like this thing. My wife has like an engineer brain. Like I don't know why I try to argue with her. Like I manage projects good, but she's like the the engineer part of it. So I have to not pretend like a know it all. Like like what? I know what I'm doing, babe. Like you I don't know. I can bring up examples, but it's funny. I just know that God's speaking to my heart to not like in that know it all thing. It could be with your wife too. And also, you know what? It could be with your kids as well. Because the other day, um, Alejandra said that avocado is a fruit. And I was just like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not putting fruit on my toast right now, Allie. Looked it up. I don't know it all. Avocado is a fruit. So, all right, let me, uh, let me get going here. I didn't want to drag it, drag it on too much. Um, never pay back evil with more evil, just like it says up there. Um, do things in such a way that everyone can see you're honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with others. And um, for me, that's uh, live your life above reproach, you know? Do what's honorable. Don't pay back evil with evil because somebody's going to see it, you know what I mean? Because you have to live your life in a way that your brother can come up to you and say, hey, why did you do that? Oh, uh, mm, mm, like, why did you pay back evil with evil? Like, that's not you. I know you, Jesse. Why did you do that? You know, because I'm, I'm living my life above reproach, that if somebody has to come to me and say, I see this area in your life, what's the deal there? Because that's not really what, what's going on. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Um, that doesn't mean let people run over you, okay? That means where can I give here? Where can, I, where can I compensate? Because I see this person, I know this person, I know that's important, and I, I also want to do this. Where can I meet that middle ground? Where can I help that? You know, that's what living in peace looks like. You get some, I get some. Everybody shares the blankets. Everybody eats off the, the same plate. You know what I mean? There's, there's more than enough to, get, to go around. Okay. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God, for the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their head. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Like, oh, this pumps me up so much. When somebody hurts you, you have a chance to get revenge and enact revenge, right? It's just like when somebody persecutes you, how do you handle it, okay? If somebody has hurt me, I have the opportunity to really make that, and, and I'm in the right, right? I have a real big opportunity to make that person feel the way they're trying to make me feel right now. Um, whether When they've hurt me and hurt me and hurt me, and I've just let them run over me because... I know it's not right, but I know that they're better than that. And you try to give them an opportunity for to clean that up. And then pretty soon it comes times to cut that relationship and go the other way. What am I going to do? Am I going to go and, and tell them exactly everything they've ever done? And am I going to do these things to enact revenge because they've hurt me and hurt me and they've hurt me? No. It's super hard to say, but I can tell you with 100% fact in my life that no, I will not do that. And never will I. 
because I've seen it too many times that if I try to take this revenge into my hands, it's going to be this big compared to what God's going to do. He says that if you give this to me, if you give me this trouble and let me handle it, I will be more swift and more righteous than anybody could ever know. But if you want to go ahead and call that person and yeah, 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 and make them feel like you, they're trying to make you feel, go ahead. But I'm just letting you know it's going to be futile. And it, you're not going to let me do it. And um, it says right there, so like in there, don't take revenge, guys. I'm telling you, is any, I've, I've been in fights. I've been in fist fights and all that kind of stuff. Um, whether I've won or I've lost, I've felt bad. If I've knocked the person out, I felt bad for them. If I got knocked out, I felt bad for me. You know, like there's nothing good that comes out of fights. Like I, I'm a very witty person, and I can say some stuff to hurt some people. But, man, I never felt good when I did. I'll show them. I'll show them. They don't know who they're messing with, right? Ugh, it's so disgusting to be in that spirit. God, help them. What did Jesus say on the cross? They don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Have that same meek, humble heart on there. They don't know what they're doing. And if somebody does wrong to you, it says um, in 13.4, I'll just read it real quick. Um, the authorities are God's servants sent for, for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. So really, in this life, either on the judgment seat or in this life, God will get it. God will take care of it, okay? So it, it may not look what might, you think it might look like. Oh, the cops should have came and they should have done this. Who said? Did you give it to God or didn't you? Rearview Christianity is illegal. Smash that rearview mirror and don't look back. It's not worth it. It is not worth your time. If you have left something that's not good for you, solid. Don't look back. Don't turn back. What if? How are? No. God, I'm here. I'm focused. I'm yours. And if he allows that person to come back in your life, praise God. Don't remember it. Love him. You want to come up, uh, Jesse? Like everything I had not to say, girl, Jesse, but now I said it. So I really encourage you guys, Romans 12 is like 21 verses, and there's a lot, like what I just, I talked for like ever on that kind of stuff, and I know that you guys have, you know, different, God's speaking to you differently than he's speaking to me, you know what I mean? So really, this is just one chapter in Romans. I mean, look at this book. There's so much stuff in here that is waiting to be unfolded, like God can, folding a piece of paper is to conceal one side with the other. I got to I got to open it up. I got to I got to search for it, God. I want to conceal cuz this is parables, you know. He conceals one side with the other. You got to there's an unfolding process that happens. So during this week, guys, where where has he called you to, you know? Does he call you to prophesy? Is he called you to serve? Is he, he's always called you to love people. So really look inwardly. And I encourage you guys to read Romans 12 this week and just, just look at yourself. Look at him and then look at yourself. And when you have that look, cherish it. When you have that time where he's like, it's like, a, like an evaluation. Like come in for this evaluation. You have a work evaluation and you're like, if you did good and you're good at your job, you're excited to go into that work evaluation because you know that promotion and that raise is coming guess what? You're going into that meeting with God. He's already pleased with you. Okay? He's already pleased with you. So when you look in this mirror, it's not just to show me what's wrong with me, God. No, that's not the way he works. He's going to show you what he loves about you. He's going to affirm these good things. And then he's going to say, my son, what about this area of your life? Do you like this area of your life? I don't. Why don't you like this area of your life? Because God, I put it there, not you. And you get to have, and, and when you like, I, I can't stress enough that when you go into this conversation with God, you have to be honest. Otherwise, why are you even going? 
because I know there's a lot of tough stuff in your life that you feel are as important. But once you start diving in, you're going to realize that you conform to the world, and that's what the world says was important. That's what the world says was fun. But I'm telling you, I've separated myself from the world, and it's so much more fulfilling than any other thing in this life. It's more fulfilling than that extra hour on TikTok, that that extra TV show, that crude conversation. The joints you smoked with your friends. The vape you had to scramble your money together to buy. What is he speaking to your life, guys? What I look at when I walk down the street, is he speaking about that? How I manage my finances, where are you speaking to us, God? God has asked you to renew our minds right now. God, that we, we, we are not conformed to this world, but that we're heading in a direction that is straight, that goes to the narrow path, God. God, I, I pray that as the season continues, God, that you continue to fan the flames of our heart, God. Fan the flames of first love. Jesus, you're so, I keep getting Jesus, you're so important. Jesus, you have the importance in our life. There is nothing more important than you. There's nothing more lovely than you, God. You're altogether lovely. I want you guys right now to think about, just be honest with yourself and ask God, just lean, lean back into him. Don't lean into your own understanding during this time, but just lean back into him. Say, God, are you pleased with me? God, do you like the way I'm living my life? Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. God, are you happy with me? Are you happy with the way I'm living my life? God, is there an area? God, is there an area that I'm not giving to you? God, is there an area where I'm giving some of it to you? God, is there an area where I am doing it right? But why don't I feel like I'm doing it right? God, affirm me in this. God, encourage me in this. God, I'm tired. I'm tired. It feels like what I'm doing isn't working. God, show me. Show me that there's something there. God, show me that there's a little bit of life there. God, show me that tiny spark. God, we're not just smoldering candles. God, you don't see just smoke. You see a little bit of an ember there, and you blow life onto it. God, I ask you to renew our hearts. God, I just say yes. And God, I say yes, and I sign up again. God, with what's coming, with the move of your spirit, let us not be left out. God, let us search our hearts. Use us, God. Mold us. I'm the clay and you're the potter. Couldn't think of a better father. Jesus, I thank you for the way you love us. God, I thank you for the way that you're preparing us. God, I just ask you, I ask you to heal hurt hearts, God. God, I ask you to heal offended hearts, God. Show them that what they're holding on to is not important. What do I hold on to? I hold on to you, God. I don't hold on to any of these offenses because if I'm holding on to an offense, I'm not clinging to you. Jesus, forgive me. I just want to love you. I just want to be with you. Thank you for giving us this access, this ability to love you and to worship you and to honor you. You're so holy. You're so holy, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. guys need prayer for anything, come up, we'll pray for you. But I really, really encourage
encourage you guys to just do work with God and be honest with him. Be honest with him this week because there's a revival coming. The revival's here. I feel it. My heart's on fire. I just want to keep running back and forth. It's here. It's Guys, it's coming. Like I said, there's this there's this wind and this sail that we're putting up and we're, we're, we're putting it on. Be doers of his word, not just spectators. God, am I a spectator and where am I spectating? God, I want to be a doer of your word. When you say to go, I want to go. Even if it's just a small step, but that small step is a huge leap. Just remember, you're only two feet off the ground. You're not standing on that mountain ledge. That's what the devil wants you to see is a mountain ledge, but you're not. You're standing right there on solid rock. Jesus, we worship you. We love you.